In this video, I want to show you how I made a simple fade in, fade out effect for the game. And this really just comes down to rendering a full rectangle that overlays everything else on the screen that I want to make fade in or fade out. And just playing with the opacity on that rect, so changing the transparency. And as it gets less transparent, so more full, then it makes everything behind it appear to fade out. And as I increase the transparency on that overlaying rect, then you can see through it and everything appears to fade in. If I wanted to put some text over top of this, I would need to be careful to render the text after I render this, this overlay that will uh, make everything else fade that is rendered before it. To make this happen, I just need uh, a few new fields on the game struct. I have the overlay itself, which is an SDL rect. And I place that at 0, 0, so 0x, zero 0y, zero and I make it the full width and the full height of the window. And then I have an alpha argument. When you are drawing a rect, you have another argument for the alpha, which is the transparency level. And then just a simple Boolean to check if this is active or not. And this next part is interesting because I, I have found that this is a pattern that I'm using a few times now the frame and the timer. I used this uh, similar pattern when I was making the explosions in an earlier video. I do recommend you watch that. And you can see that I've repeated that pattern to handle the fade in, the fade out as well. And I'll cover that in just a moment. So I initialize everything when I create my game struct just for the default, uh, default settings here. A lot of this is automatic anyway, but I wanted to put it in here just so you could see what the default settings would be. Uh, here is the size of the overlay. Of course, the overlay is inactive uh, at first. I start with the first frame of the animation sequence. The overlay timer, I set to the overlay timer constant, which is two seconds. So every phase, the fade out, will take two seconds. And then there's a two second pause between uh, until the fade in begins, which will also be two seconds. That pause in the middle there will be for if we have text rendered on the screen over top of that. It gives uh, the player a little more time to read it. And then of course we have to keep track of the alpha, the transparency level. Zero would mean that the, um, the overlay is completely transparent. 100 or rather 255 would be 100% transparency. Don't make the same mistake I did. I thought alpha would be zero to 100 uh, in terms of percentages, but STL actually accepts zero to 255 for that. It's, uh, it's a U8 an unsigned integer, 8 bits, and um, it goes all the way up to 255 for a full, fully uh, filled in rectangle. And when I'm fading in or fading out, uh, I want to set the player to being invincible. That means that when the screen is black, we don't want our player to be destroyed. So I set that uh, as, uh, I use that as well when we're changing uh, states. So first thing you can look at the um, cases that I handle here for handling events, I'm going to trigger the fade out and the fade in just by hitting the F key. So you can play around with that. At the end of all of our rendering, so again, to make sure that our overlay happens on top of all of our players and our drones and things like that, uh, we check to see our frame. Now I'm going to open two windows here. So you can compare this to the pattern that I use for the explosions. Explosions, let's see here. Looking at the way that I handle explosions, you can see some similarities between the patterns. Explosions happen in frames and each frame shows uh, another image so that when we iterate through them in order, it looks like the explosion is animated, right? So here I'm checking if the explosion is active. Over here, I'm checking if the overlay is active. Over here on the left, I'm grabbing my image, so the frame that I'm on for the explosion. Over on this right side for the game overlay, for the frame overlay, it's a little bit different. I have three frames that I have to worry about, and rather than loading a texture, I'm doing different things with my alpha. So if uh, when I'm on the first frame here, I'm increasing the alpha, which means that the overlay is getting gradually more full and that means that everything behind it is appearing to fade out. I'm increasing the alpha by five every time. I have to be careful here. If I were to over uh, overshoot 255, because it's a U8 integer, it will actually overflow and it'll start again at zero. So you'll get this weird flickering effect. 
I have to check to see if my new alpha is less than my old alpha. That means that I've overflowed 255 and I've started again at zero. And if that happens, I just want to stay at 255. So it starts to fade out and it stays at 255 max. I can't do a simple min or max check here. I have to check for the overflow, which means checking uh, like this. If new, new alpha is suddenly lower than the overlay alpha as it's currently set, that means I've overflowed and I have to cap it at 255. So that's what I've done right here. That's the first frame. And then at the end here, just like we're doing with our explosions, if the frame timer is zero, then we reset the timer and we increment to the next frame. And if we ever reach the last frame, we'll catch that up here and we'll set the inactive to false. So I'm doing the same with the overlay. If we've overshot our third frame, that means we're done. We've showed the we've shown the whole fade in, fade out, it's finished, and we reset our our variables, our fields right here. So here we check us, uh, pardon me. After rendering, we decrement our timer. If we've finished the timer for this frame, we increment the frame, and then we'll catch our second frame. Uh, which I just want to leave at 255. And this gives us two extra seconds to show any text on the screen or whatnot. And then in our final frame, our third frame, this is where we start to reduce the alpha again. So our overlay starts to become more and more transparent, uh, which means that everything behind it will appear to fade in to become more and more visible. I have to check for an underflow this time. Underflow, not overflow. And if our new alpha is suddenly greater than our previously set alpha. That means we've underflowed the integer and we have to cap it at zero. We have to keep it at zero. And here the rendering is a little bit different than rendering a texture. We set the render draw blend mode to blend because we want our overlay to blend with what's beneath it or what's underneath it, behind it. We set our draw color consistently to black and this is where the alpha is being reset every time. And we call render fill rect and we're just rendering our overlay SDL rect. I've noticed that I've been using this pattern uh, twice now and then in future videos where I'm doing uh, some more complicated things, I'm using this pattern a lot. And uh, if you can think of a better way to do it, please let me know. But so far I find this very simple to follow and very useful. Uh, so take a look at both of these for explosions and for the fade overlay and see what you think and see if you can apply that to other situations as well where a timer and frame sort of set up like this uh, helps you manage different things. In the next video, I believe I'll be covering uh, putting text on the screen and then we'll do a fade in and fade out of text, which is different than using an overlay because uh, text, we have to work more with surfaces to make that happen. So watch for that video coming out soon. Cheers.